This month marks the 10th anniversary of the US-led invasion of Iraq and the end of Saddam Hussein. But the last 10 years have not been easy for Iraqis and the lives of women in particular have become much harder. The Imperial War Museum North is showing an exhibition of Iraqi war pictures by the award-winning photographer Sean Smith. Sheila McLennan took the Kurdish activist Hazan Mahmoud, who speaks for the Organisation of Women's Freedom in Iraq, to see the photos and discuss the impact the conflict has had. My family were involved in our struggle against Saddam's regime. We were part of the Kurdish struggle against the dictatorship. As a child, so many times my mom would send me away to stay with distant relatives because during the curfews they would arrest members of uh, political uh, people in the mountains and then they would disappear them or they would imprison them or they would rape them in prisons. So this is how we really lived. Well, let's just walk down the, the corridor here, Hassan, and just have a look at some of these photographs because towards the, the start here, this was just before the invasion in, yeah. in 2003, so just over 10 years ago, and, and this was almost like an orchestrated campaign by Saddam Hussein and, yes. and his sons to make life look as if it was all very jolly. We've got weddings here, we've got people outside, a, you know, a takeaway food shop and a day at the races, everything looking like life is great. Yeah. Well, that's what they do because they have the... Uh, because they really use too much force for example, I remember one of the things that they would kill your son if they were political. They would kill your son and then they will charge you the money for the bullets. And then they would make you uh, celebrate, a dance over the killing. You see what I mean? So this is a kind of regime that we lived under that is not scared of anything. That would, like, that they had a very big taste for decoration, you know what I mean? For kind of showing the outside world that they are providing great services to the people, that they are uh, having all this you know, law and order in place whereby people will follow. But actually it was all through bloody suppression that they were managing. And I was reading on your blog that I think like 200 or so women were, were beheaded under yes. Saddam's regime. The faithlessness campaign, what, what was that? He said Iraqi society should be cleansed from immorality. He said we are beheading them because they are prostitutes, for example, and that Iraqi women are more, they have to have a certain moral uh, as Arab Iraqi women and that they should not be prostitutes and that they were beheaded and their heads were put in front of their doors to make them an example for other women in society. So that's just part of it. Well, let's have a look at some more photographs because we've seen the ones about life just immediately before the invasion where Saddam Hussein was anxious to show that everything was, was carrying on as normal. On the other side of the exhibition, we've got photos of life kind of trying to exist with the soldiers on the streets. There's, there's, you know, in the bazaar, there's a chemist and it's got shampoo on the shelves and crouched in front with a machine gun is a US soldier patrolling the market. You've got, a, you know, a, a soldier carrying a baby. There's, there's women holding their hands out. I think they're distributing aid there in the Shula district of Baghdad. These are just a couple of, of years after the invasion. What really strikes me as a mum is how, how do you carry on with your everyday life? How do you check that your children are safe, that they're fed, that you've got clean water if you're worried that every time you go out the house you could get blown up? Just after the invasion, I went back to Baghdad, and I think what I have witnessed there, like even me as a visitor when I was there, really you don't trust to go back safe when you go out. That's how people lived, risky life. In the beginning, there were a lot of kidnapping for ransoms of money. There was a lot of gangsters. There was a lot of uh, Shia Sunni sectarian militia, you know, killings. And I mean, up to now, really, um, it's not that safe. Uh, one other thing that I like to mention here is so many orphans, so many children, babies were like really made orphan during the air raids and the bombardments or during the sanctions as well, or also during Saddam's regime that their parents or their fathers were killed. So, you know, children, Iraqi children, like we have like really this generation of orphans. And also we have uh, around 100,000, according to figures, uh, or 1 million if I'm not mistaken, widows 
Let's have a look at some more of the photos. I'm just wondering how you feel looking at these because this is your, you know, the place where you were born. Yeah. Um, it just looks so unremittingly bleak to me and so sad. Yes, for me this, this scenes, children with blood or men or people being killed or dead, I mean these are like really unfortunately familiar scenes for me during the war and during the uh, Iran-Iraq war every day we see dead bodies, every day we see children or youngsters being killed, like in the night I sleep we hear shooting all the time, shooting people uh, on the streets and killing them and like it's not easy really sometimes to even describe the feelings and the memories that because it's, they are so repetitive it, it, they almost become a way of life uh, so this is how we grow up but it is very unfortunate So we've come outside now, Hassan, and there are some giant images of Sean Smith's photographs here and, and this one we're standing in front of it just breaks your heart because you've got the soldier crouching in the background on patrol in front of a, a brick building and you can see smoke billowing up from behind it that looks like there's been some explosion. And in the foreground, looking like completely lost as if she shouldn't be there, is a, a, an older woman sobbing. Well, it's really heartbreaking as well. I mean, as you can see behind, it's written in Arabic. This is a primary school as well. Oh, right. So you never know if that woman is there for her child or if she's just there not knowing there's going to be an explosion. I mean, really, these are very regular daily basis um, occurrences of explosions, of women crying, uh, losing their loved ones or just trapped in a place where there's a huge explosion and, and that they have to put up with the traumas of it, you know. And what is particularly affecting about it, I think, is because she's in the burqa and she's yes. covered, yes. the only bit we can see of her is her, her face, face, and this is a face contorted in grief. Exactly, yes. I really don't like it. I've seen a lot of it uh, all over my life. Uh, when I was there, I mean, I lived half of my life in Kurdistan and of Iraq and the other half in England, and really... Uh, and I'm 40 years old now and I just most of my life has been filled with such images from my childhood up to today now I see it in the pictures and the images and the videos and the news or when I go back and then when I was there I grew up in it so you can imagine it's like my shadow it's uh, with me everywhere and that's why I don't like it and I feel sad for the moments that people have to go through things like that As Anne Mahmoud was talking to Sheila McLennan and the exhibition of photographs runs at the Imperial War Museum North until next February.